<clears throat> what is going on guys so today we are at our 5,000 miles six months of ownership for our 2023 Toyota Sienna 25th anniversary edition and so far well here we are today uh, we are at Millennium Toyota I've done um, I'm waiting for the six uh, 5k servicing and what I want to do today is also kind of give you guys an update and uh, a slight review of the whole dealership experience. So what I did today was instead of going to my local dealership, I went ahead and I took a, a slight drive to Long Island. And there was no traffic, it's very nice. So here we are waiting. Uh, so far, initial impressions is it's very nice, very, very on time, uh, very organized and taking me in, cordial, polite, uh, just very clean overall, very just nice, breezy, right? Instead of what I'm used to, very packed, condensed uh, city environment. Toyota does a two-year complimentary service. They do it biannually, so four services in total every 5,000 miles, but the first 5K doesn't include oil change. But every 1,000 miles for my vehicles, I really want to go ahead and, and just uh, flush it. So that's what we're doing today. It's about 80 bucks So with, uh, with uh, the oil filter, so I went ahead and said, hey, let's go do it. So here we are waiting. Uh, overall, I got free coffee right here. Um, Entertainment, the lounge, some comfy seats, uh, nice ambient noise, the vacuum in the background, but overall the dealership is very nice. Uh, no Supras here, right? Uh, no 86s here, but we do see a couple primes. I want to go ahead and just do a, a walk around, but here we are. This is initial check-in, but I'll do a mid-service mid check-in and also kind of a conclusion to see if it's worth it uh, coming out all the way here to do the servicing. So here we are at the showroom. You got your Toyota's EV here, the BZ4X. You got your plug-in hybrid here. Not many uh, sports cars, right? You got your Crown, I believe, right? And, oh, is that the Prius? I gotta check out that Prius, the new Prius, right? But here we are, this is, uh, I can't believe, background the story, I've been looking at Toyota RAV4 Primes before getting the Sienna. And the RAV4 Prime we have here is Blueprint SE trim based on the, uh, the, the wheels and the fabric seats, but it's all blacked out and badges are pretty nice on the blueprint. Um, but the thing is, the backstory is, I was going to get into one of these uh, as a family vehicle for the girls, but I'm glad I didn't because everything works out for a reason because our RAV4 Prime didn't end up getting shipped or delivered or allocated even uh, prior to the whole uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which you know kind of canceled out the, the 7,500 uh, EV credit so anyway, long story short, we ended up going for a Toyota Sienna instead of getting a RAV4 Prime, all right? Um, but thinking about the RAV4 Prime, if we went ahead and got in it, it would have been much cheaper. Even with the XLE, uh, XSE, uh, with the premium package, it would have been much cheaper with the EV credit versus going for the Sienna. All right, Sienna, we got no credit at all. But uh, just taking a look, this won't fit the girls. It's gonna be the same story as the XC60 as my dad's car. Mama will be all the way on the side and then girls would be right there in the middle in the side seat and they'll be very cramped, right? Uh, of course, going forward facing will be much different, but still, the Toyota Sienna is a different, a totally different story, totally different vibe. And here we are. And one thing that I noticed, this is their whole inventory right here besides going outside, right? What I noticed is the Sienna inventory is still out. The Sienna is still a hot commodity. Some we are selling like hotcakes still. A lot of primes here, but maybe Toyota RAV4 hybrids, I don't see those because I think those are high, hot too. But right now you don't see any type of Siennas or Sequoias or uh, the newer like 86s, Supras, etc. But some, some nice, interesting finds, right? So here we are, we are done with the servicing. I, overall, I recommend the service very much. Uh, if you guys are interested in doing service at Millennium Toyota, definitely I will recommend. His name is David, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert his information below. I took his card, but definitely way better. I'm so glad I came here versus staying in the city. And everything was great. They even have bagels eventually, uh, coffee. I didn't have to buy breakfast, so. I was in and out on a Saturday. I uh, came in here at around 7.18. They took my car in. I was out by 
according to this, I was out by eight. All right, so there you go. Uh, so right now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to, all right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and make my way to possibly finding a car wash, if possible. But another thing I have to do is exchange this Black Horse off-road bumper guard. Uh, hopefully it goes smoothly. I had a lot of, uh, did a lot of dealing and talking with the company to go ahead and do an exchange, if not a refund for this one. I understand refund not possible, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a double layer to see if it sets off the sensor. Uh, they actually do give you a complimentary car wash, but um, it's through a machine. So I'd rather not have that because of it's ceramic coated. So here we go. And like maybe try to find a car wash here. That's a, a power wash bay and see if I could just spray down the car while I wait for the Black Horse Off-Road Company to open. All right, so we are leaving the dealership. Let's see if it's a different exit. Continue on North Franklin Street, three quarters of a mile. And we are going to get our exchange for the Black Horse Bumper Guard. We have a total of eight miles to go. Uh, this thing is glaring. Hey, excuse me. Do you happen to know where Black Horse Off Road is? Yeah. Right here. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Hey man, I'm looking for. Yahoo! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Okay. See, I don't want to break my legs. Ooh, that's lower than I thought. Okay, so this one is not for a Sienna, but it's for a Highlander. So, given that, it should work. It should work, it should work, it should work. All right guys, so here we are. We are doing this. There's a double layer in glossy black. They actually let me choose, they cut it open. They let me choose between the textured wrinkled black finish or the glossy black. I went for the glossy black this time. Let's see how it goes. Let's see. He says this one actually doesn't mess with the sensors. So according to that and my viewer, thank you for my viewer who actually pointed this out. I went ahead and inquired about them and inquired about this one part in particular to see if I could get the double layer more coverage. But for now, we are headed back home. We might go ahead and find a place to wash the vehicle just to finish off our morning routine or morning errand run. It's very dirty, but we will go ahead and finish it off. Right now I have about 41 miles cruising range going home. It's about 31 miles going home. The trip. So let's see if I can make it back. All right, we're going to risk it. There is a BJ's right here. BJ's uh discount gas in 600 feet, turn right on the, road. the line is not so bad right but i'm gonna risk it i'm gonna risk it and not wait in this line and go back home and then from there see if i can make it back 41 miles cruising range 31 miles in terms of uh, distance from here to home let's see how it goes let's see if i can make it back let's test the hybrid hyper mile it or try to all right so now we are headed home 31 miles with 41 miles of cruising range that leaves us about 10 miles left on the tank uh, but there should be some reserve left to be quite honest we'll see your vehicle's fuel is low would you like to search for nearby gas stations nope so right now I have about uh, 23 miles left back home and cruising range is 33 miles so it kicks in around 33 miles left it lets you know that you have fuel low I have a little bit of uh, uh, it's still not empty yet right so let's see 30 37 miles per gallon right now uh, doing the pulse and glide basically I'm, uh, I'm, I'm I'm hitting top speed let's say a little bit over 55 ish and just basically on the downhills and everything i'm just letting it off the throttle without of course endangering or causing a traffic jam so let's see how it goes 37.2 miles per gallon this method seems to be working for me so far uh, in terms of maxing out or maximizing my my cruising range or fuel economy 
Yeah, so right now it's on, let's see, we have, we're, we're averaging 37.9 miles per gallon. Uh, the low, low uh, fuel icon or alert is here on the dash. And we have about 32 miles of cruising range with 22 miles left. The AC is on at 72 with fans running on low speed because it's pretty hot, 82 degrees. So we'll see where we can make it home. I have a good feeling we're going to make it home, but I really want to see how much I'm averaging for this tank. All right, guys, so we're here at the gas station. We finally made it back and we have 15 miles of cruising range. I'm just waiting for the for my my turn, but we have one here. 46 miles. That's pretty impressive. Let's do the finishing touches. We have 46 miles left in the tank, 80 miles, so I, 80 degrees. So I had the uh, AC on running at 72, low fan speed, and wow, pretty much I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Let me go ahead and get this going on here. All right, guys, so we are back. Let us, this is, uh, we spent about 57 and change on the fuel up we uh fueled up 15.16 gallons and the total gallons in the sienna should be 18 gallons so when it says low fuel you still have about i would say at least two gallons left in my case probably three two and change so let's see we have uh let's see the last one that we have i fueled up back in Let's see, it says July, July 1st, July 1st, and how much did that cost? 55.45, we spent a little, much, a little bit more this time, 57.61, so last time we filled up, the odometer was 11.01, right now the odometer is 16.70, all right, so you take away that, uh, nine, six, five. Five hundred and sixty-nine miles cruising range, uh, and then I filled up fifteen point one six four, so five sixty-nine divided by fifteen point one six four. That's thirty-seven point five two mpg for this tank. So that that went down actually. So I have a uh, fuel app. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Fuel app. Um, my best miles per gallon was back in, well, this is my second fuel up. So uh, back in July 1st, that was 41, for, <clears throat> excuse me, 41.4 miles per gallon. And this time around, we have 37.5. So that's very interesting. It went down a bit, all right? But the last time I filled up my first fuel up, Actually, my dad fuel that up was back in May 6 of 2023, so that didn't really count because that's our first fuel up. And my first official one uh, with the baseline is uh, back in July 1st. A month later, it's back in, uh, right now is August 5th. So overall, 37.5 miles per gallon uh, versus a estimated average of 36, no, 35 miles because we have to overdrive drive. 35 miles per gallon uh, city and highway. So. Uh, so far, pretty much Toyota has met, this car has met the uh, advertised expectations of in terms of miles per gallon. So EPA average is pretty cool. You know, on that note, again, just checking in. Uh, six months, I, we love the vehicle. The girls love the vehicle. Uh, again, as you can see, uh, pretty gas efficient. If you guys have any questions or want to share your stories, link them in the description down below or just leave a comment. Definitely appreciate you guys watching. See you guys in the next one. Take care.